Hello everyone. Let's continue our discussion on defining the width and height of core and die. So we looked into how do we come up with a utilization factor and the aspect ratio terms and some examples for it. So we are let's take another example. For example, we have this square shaped chip. Okay, and the dimensions of this particular chip are something like this. You have the core, you have the core uh, height as four unit. You have the the core width as four unit. And now let us try to calculate the utilization factor and aspect ratio. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll place our existing circuit onto onto this particular core, and this is how it looks like. Let's say we we'll, we we'll place it somewhere over here. Okay, now in order to calculate the ut utilization factor, you need the area occupied by the netlist, which is nothing but two into two units, which is four square units. Okay, it is uh, this is the area occupied by the netlist and the total area of the core. You have the height as 4 unit, you have the width as 4 unit so total area of the core is 4 cross 4 which is which is again four, uh, 16 square unit so 4 square unit by 16 square unit you have it as 0.25 so it says that out of the complete chip area 25% of your chip has been utilized okay and the remaining 75% is available for you for optimization and for all the all, all other things so 25% of the of the uh, of the core area has been utilized by the initial netlist which is a complete which is completely connected by wires or or uh, which, which will be completely connected by ideal wires which which don't have any shape or size and you have 75% of the chip area available for you where you can place the additional cells where you can uh, which which can be used for routing also for routing this will there will be some more layers of routing so basically when we do a routing this this is on one layer on the top of this there will be one more layer and where you will be doing the routing and all those things so we'll talk about that in in in, in some other videos so you have the 75 percent area available for cells only for placement of the cells only okay and now let's uh, let us calculate the aspect ratio so when we try to calculate the aspect ratio it's height by width sorry it's it's height by width so height is 4 unit width is 4 unit and you have your aspect ratio as one as talked about the aspect ratio in the in the previous videos where wherever you see an aspect ratio of one it is supposed to be a square chip okay so uh, this was the this is how you uh, uh, this is how you come up with the width and height of core and die the next the next point in uh, the next uh, step in this particular physical design flow or in the flow of floor planning is to define the locations of pre-placed cells so before we go into defining the locations of pre-placed cells let us try to give you a brief overview of what does pre-placed cells actually mean okay so again we'll take another example uh, let's let's take a combination logic so the assumption is this combination logic does some amount of function okay it does some function maybe it, it's a memory or maybe it's a it's a it's a multiplier or it's a mux it's it's a complex mux or it's it could be another any clock divider any complex clock divider or so on. this basically this combinational logic does some amount of some amount of job okay and it does such a big task that we that it uh, the the output of this combinational logic is a huge circuit it's a circuit of let's say some some uh, 50k gates or some 100k gates so it's a, it's a huge circuit okay so there is a way that we did not implement this we did not implement this circuitry every time as a part of the as a part of the main circuitry but we can take this section this piece of the circuit out of the main circuit and then implement this separately and even we can granularize this particular this particular circuit itself so if this was let's say 100k gates we can divide this uh, divide, divide this circuit in such a fashion that you can make it actually 50k gates and 50k gates you can make two blocks of 50k gates so it looks something like this so for example let's take this particular circuitry out and th th this circuitry is a part of your main netlist okay let's take this piece out of the main netlist and do and do few things on it do, do few processing on it so what we'll do let's let's try to cut this circuit into two parts okay so we'll cut this circuit into two parts this is one of the parts this is one of the sections of the circuit this is one of the sections of the circuit now the idea is we'll separate both of them when they, they when they are attached together or when they are connected together they perform some function but right now we'll we'll separate them out okay something like this so the, we have this cut one we have this cut two and and we have this connectivity information if you see these are the connectivity information that you see so a1 is connected to a5 in this fashion we have all this information from the cut1 we have all the information from cut2 let's try to separate this out as two different blocks so now if you look into a1 a1 is connected to a5 so a1 the output of a1 goes to a5 
the output of a4 goes to a6 the output of a4 goes to a6 okay these are two different blocks the, uh, let's try to uh, uh, put it in that way these are two different blocks and this block will be will be implemented separately and this block will be implemented separately let's see how so we take we take these two separate blocks two two blocks independently and 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 give give and extend the io pins over here so when we say so our input output pins basically these are the input pins of this particular block this is the only output pin of this particular block so let's try to first extend those pins and it will look something like this okay so this box will have an this is the input set of this box this is the output set of this box okay not just now, now, now let's try to detach these two blocks okay we'll black box this box and try to detach them so when we when we black box this particular box this section this section of the circuitry or this section of the circuitry is invisible for the one who is looking into top who is looking into the main netlist okay so now this section is invisible to, to the to the to the to the top netlist to the netlist that we have implemented this section of the netlist is invisible to the top netlist and we'll separate them out we'll separate this uh, two boxes out something like this so this four four outputs of this particular block will behave as four out four output ports this four inputs this four ports for this particular block will behave as an input ports okay and this block will be implemented separately this block will be implemented separately the advantage of doing this is for example this block or this piece of the circuit is being replicated multiple times on your chip or, or in uh, this particular thing is being used multiple times on the on a netlist to perform certain function you need not implement in implement this one multiple times you just you can just black box them you can give this this particular block to some to some user you can give this particular block to some user and those two users will implement these blocks separately and that will be implemented only once and then these blocks and these blocks can be connected in this fashion multiple times onto the onto the netlist and can be used and can be used when, whenever it is required so you did not implement this multiple times you just implement it once and then it can be reused so the, this is the this is the concept of reused models where where we where we have this small modules and that can be reused separately on the top level on the top netlist okay now for example there are other similarly there are other ips also available readily available in the market it's something like this if you have you can have something like memory you can have something like a clock gating cell a complex clock gating cell you can have something like comparator you can have something like mux so all of them can be implemented once and can be and can be instantiated multiple times onto onto a netlist so this need not be implemented multiple times because this is a part of your top level netlist they perform some functions they receive some input pins they, uh, they receive some input signals they deliver some output signals but the functionality of this particular cell will be implemented only once and that's what we call it as pre placed cells because because these cells are being just placed once in at once in the chip that uh, we have to define the locations or the arrangement of this particular of this particular cells and this has to be done before before the routing before the actual placement and routing so the placement of these cells on a, on a on a top level chip will be fixed and since they are placed before the actual placement and routing they are referred to as pre placed cells okay so these cells are placed in such a fashion that the, the 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 automated tool whatever the placement and routing tool we have that will not touch the locations of this particular cell once they are placed on uh, once their locations are fixed onto a top level on on a floor plan they are fixed they are not touched or they are not moved by any of the automated placement and routing tools okay so what we'll do is since we now we understand what the pre-placed cells are we'll try try to take few of the pre-placed cells or few of the cells let's say block a block b whatever we discussed in the top we'll try to take that cells and place it on a chip in such a fashion that their locations are not not moved and once they are placed they are they are fixed in that locations and the further steps will not touch those locations okay so let's try to do that small part in the next video thank you